Hey everyone, this is Alex Cordobard, and I have not done a tutorial in a long time, and I really missed it, so I decided to get back into it and start making tutorials for you guys again. So hopefully this helps someone, and the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to start from the very basics of Blender and teach you how to navigate around the 3D space, a little bit about the interface, so that you know enough basics to get started and learn by yourself while you watch other tutorials that I make. So the first thing we're going to do in this tutorial is going to be the interface a little bit and mostly how to navigate the 3D space and manipulate objects. So let's get started. Okay, the first thing you need to do is go to blender.org and download the latest version of Blender if you haven't done that already and once you've downloaded and installed Blender go ahead and open it and you should see something that looks like this and it might be a little overwhelming at first but once you get the hang of it and know how to navigate around Blender you'll get familiar with it and it'll get a lot easier so the first thing I'm going to do before we get into how to navigate and change the views and all that stuff is I'm just gonna do a quick interface rundown so that you're not overwhelmed by all these different windows that are here. Uh, this first window right here is the 3D view and this is where you will animate your scenes and model objects and things like that. So if you click down here, you could see that this window is currently selected to 3D view. So that's what will be displayed. Right here in the 3D view window, there is a panel called Object Tools. And this is used to further manipulate your 3D objects and other things, which I will go into more detail later. But for now, we could go ahead and close this by pressing the T key. If you do not understand what key I am pressing, down here on the bottom left corner, the key will be displayed, so you can look down here. Now, this panel, or this window down here, you can see is currently selected to Timeline. So, the Timeline is basically, it represents the time and movement that is happening in your scene right now. So, if I if I scroll this through the timeline you could see this number changing right here which is the frame number so it's adding or going up in frames or going down and when you move this it will move and animate it will show the animation of your scene if you have animated it right now it won't show anything since we haven't done it so I will go into more detail with that later over here is the outliner which is basically used to show you what is going on in your scene it shows you all the objects in your scene whether to render them or if you can see them and a lot more other things so I will go into more detail later down here is the properties panel and in this one it will list different properties of things such as right now it's on the render properties so it will give you options on how large you want to render your image and what format you want to use if you want to use an image format or a video format and then up here there's other options where you could change to see the properties of different things such as the materials of objects and the textures which I will go into more later and so hopefully that helps to declutter the space a little bit and now since we don't really want to see any of this anymore we're just gonna focus on the 3D space go ahead and hover your mouse over the 3D space and hit shift plus spacebar and it will minimize everything else and leave you with just the 3D space. The next thing to learn in Blender is how to navigate around the 3D space. So you want to be able to move and look at this 
look at your scene in any direction that you want. Now to rotate around the 3D space, you hold, click and hold the middle mouse button and move your mouse. To pan or move from side to side or up and down, you hold shift plus middle mouse button and move your mouse. And to zoom in, you scroll the mouse wheel up or down. So go ahead and play a little bit around with that and get familiar with zooming in and out and rotating to different angles of the cube that's in the scene. And if, if you have a laptop and you do not have a, a mouse with the three buttons and a middle mouse button, then it, that's pretty easy to fix. Just go over here to File, User Preferences, Input, and uh, Emulate 3 Button Mouse. And now instead of using the middle mouse button, you will, to zoom, is Control Alt Left Mouse Button and move the mouse up and down. Pan is Shift Alt Left Mouse Button. and to rotate is alt left mouse button so that is if you do not have a three button mouse now in the scene you will see three objects right here this one is the default cube which is a geometry figure which is used to model into different shapes it's one of the simplest shapes and it loads in every default scene of blender over here is the camera which is used to render what the camera sees into an image or an animation. And right here is the lamp, which is used to light your scene. So now that you know how to navigate around the 3D viewport, it's handy to be able to navigate whichever way you want. But say you want to look at the cube from a direct angle. The way to do that is on your numpad and if you do not if you do not have a numpad such as on a laptop go up here back to user preferences go back to input and put emulate numpad so if you have a numpad you will use the numpad if you do not you will use your number keys that are on the top of your keyboard the 1 through 9 so if you hit 1 on your numpad, it will go into front view. As you can see by the top left right here, it says front. If you hit 3, it goes to side view. And 7 goes to top view. Now, if you hold control, if you hold control down and hit 1, 3, or 7, it will go to the opposite of that. So instead of the front, it will go to the back instead of the right side it will go to the left side and instead of the top it will go to the bottom so those are the ways to get a direct perspective of whatever you're doing and if you want to move in increments uh, you would use the four eight six and two keys to move in increments such as this so that you could get exactly the angle that you want for modeling or doing whatever you want to. Now if you hit the 5 on the numpad you will see that it changes the view from perspective to orthographic and basically orthographic means it has no perspective at all. You will only see what you see straight on and with no perspective. So this is useful in modeling sometimes when you have something that you need to trace over such as a background image but you usually want to stick with perspective to see exactly how your model will be and how it will be rendered so what I would suggest doing is getting familiar with rotating and navigating around the 3D scene and once you're good with that, we'll move on to the next thing.
All right, the next thing you want to learn once you got the hang of navigating around the 3D space is learning how to move your objects around the 3D space. So getting out of orthographic view by pressing 5 on the numpad and going back to perspective, I will grab the cube by right clicking it and you can see that there is an orange contour around the box. So if you want to select things you right mouse click them and now we're gonna learn how to move this object around the 3D space and change it. So to grab objects is the shortcut is G key so hit the G key and move your mouse around and you can see that it moves the cube. If you want to confirm the movement you left click and if you do not want to confirm the movement just right click and it will snap back to the center and if you if you do the movement and you decide you do not like it the undo key is control and Z now to rotate your object hit the R key and you can see that it rotates the object in the perspective that I'm in. So if I'm looking at the cube from this angle, it will rotate it like this. If I look at it from the front view, it will rotate it in this direction. Now let's say you want to rotate it in every direction. Just hit R and you will see that right now my mouse has two arrows and hit R again and you will see that the two arrows now turn into four arrows and I can rotate it any which way I want. Now one important thing to know about rotating and moving and scaling objects is that there are three main axes uh, for the 3D space. The axes are the x-axis, which is the red one, the y-axis, which is the green one, and the z-axis, which is the blue one. And the, it is not shown unless you go into orthographic view, then you can see it. So if you want to constrain one of these axes and only move your object or rotate your object around a certain axis, you would hit G to grab your cube and move it. And then you would hit either Y to move it along the Y axis, X, or Z to move it along each of those axes. Same thing goes for rotation. You could rotate it arbitrarily or you could select a definitive way of rotating it. So you could rotate it around a certain axis to get a more precise rotation. Now after rotation is to learn how to scale it. To scale an object you hit the S key and move your mouse up or down and it will scale it. Same thing with the axes, if you hit S and then Z, it will scale it along those axes. So that is how to move it and you will see that when you select an object you have this 3D manipulator with all three of the axes drawn on it. This is also a, a way of grabbing and rotating your objects. Right now, if you go down here, you will see that 3D manipular, manipulator sorry, is enabled and it is on the translate manipulator which is moving. So if you click and drag one of the arrows you can move it along that axis. And if you want to rotate it you could also use this manipulator and go down here and turn on the rotation manipulator and you will get these these semicircles and you can rotate it that way. This way is another way of rotating it but it is much easier and faster workflow to rotate it with using the shortcuts. You will find that throughout Blender using shortcuts will save you a lot of time and a lot of hassle. So I would suggest using the R, G, and S keys to rotate and scale or if you if you want to do it on an exact one you could also use the 3D manipulator. 
if you would like all three of these, the rotation scale and uh, location of the 3D manipulator, you could hold shift and click on the other two and it will put all three of them here. Personally, I find that this takes up part of the view and it's harder to see what you're working on. So I like to just turn this off. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. And uh, so this is the end of this tutorial. I hope it helps in learning some of the basics of Blender and I'll see you in the next tutorial. If you have any questions, leave me a comment or send me a message. Have a good day. Bye.